Acid indigestion often accompanies the condition for which you take mineral oil. When it does, mineral oil gives only halfway relief. So for thorough relief, try Haley's M.O. It combines mineral oil with acid-neutralizing milk of magnesia. Yet Haley's, capital M dash capital O, Haley's M.O. Now we present once again Backstage Wife, the story of Mary Noble. A little Iowa girl who married one of America's most handsome actors, Larry Noble, matinee idol of a million other women. The story of what it means to be the wife of a famous star. No woman can be truly attractive if dandruff dims the beauty of her hair. And because double dandruff actually works where many dandruff combating methods fail... Smart women everywhere are turning to double dandering to fight dandruff effectively. You see, to get real relief, you must kill the germ called Pityrosporum ovale that many leading authorities explain is the cause of the most common kind of dandruff. And most ordinary methods don't destroy this germ. They merely remove loose dandruff, and plain water and brushing will do that. But double dandering actually kills this germ on contact. That's why, even in many severe cases, results with double dandering have been remarkable. This amazing effectiveness is due to a special ingredient that's so wonderfully efficient many hospitals use it. In double dandarine, we call it Alzan. So try double dandarine. If you're not completely satisfied, return the empty bottle and get your money back. Buy double dandarine today. And now, backstage wife, the story of Mary Noble and what it means to be the wife of a famous star. Dinner is over in the Rosehaven Long Island house where Mary and Larry Noble live. And in the kitchen, as Maud Marlowe, a friend of the family, helps Mary with the dishes, Tom Bryson, the author of Larry's current Broadway hit, smokes a cigarette in front of the living room fireplace. Suddenly, Larry stands up and says... Much as I hate to eat and run, Tom, I guess I'd better get started for the station or I'll miss my train to New York. Well, you know best about that, Larry. <laughs> Sorry you gotta go and all that, but, well, I'll try to keep the home fires burning till you get back tonight. <laughs> I'll bet. Well, you'll have to admit the idea has its comic side. The great matinee idol leaves home to earn his living on the stage <laughs> while his good friend stays behind and entertains a lonesome bride. Very funny. Well, maybe it's not so funny at that. I always did think being an actor was no way to make a living. The hours are terrible. At least for anybody who even pretends to lead a normal home life. I can't see that it's disrupted my home life so much. It always struck me that Mary and I have managed to live a very simple and pleasant sort of existence. Well, sure you have, Larry. And it's a good thing you appreciate it. Because there'd be plenty of people waiting to take your place if you ever vacated. You're talking like a chump, Tom. What's the matter with you, anyhow? Well, I'm all right. It's you who's lost a sense of humor. Can't you take a little good-natured kidding? Sure, only right now I haven't got the time. I've got to get started for the station. Well, I'll see you later tonight. You expect to still be up? Well, sure, why not? I have plenty to say to Mary to last till you get back. Now, don't you worry about that. We won't be bored. I wasn't thinking of that. Ford Marlowe practically tossed me out of the kitchen forcibly. She insisted she'd finish up the dishes by herself. So I decided I'd join you two men. Fine, except that I've got to be going... I'll see you later, dear. Oh, Larry, wait just a minute till I get my coat and I'll drive you to the station. No, don't bother, Mary. It won't take me long to walk there. But it looks like rain. And besides, I've got to put the car away anyhow. I'll come to meet you, too, when you come back tonight. What for? It's so late at night. (laughs) Maybe it's just to see that you come straight home. Don't be silly. Oh, come on, darling. I'm taking you in the car. All right. But I don't want you driving around the countryside all by yourself in the middle of the night. If it's raining when I come back, I'll take a taxi home. Well, what makes you think she... Well, she'll be alone, Larry. What about me? Don't I count for something? Oh, yes, you. Well, that's different, Tom, of course. That is, if you feel like meeting me later on. We'll be there. And if you can't make your regular train, you'll call, won't you, Larry? Sure. Good. You go on ahead and get the car started. I'll just call to Maud and tell her where I'm going. Okay, Mary. Maud! Oh, Maud! I'm going to drive Larry to the station. I'll be right back. Hey, you think I need a hat? Where are you going, Tom? What, to the station? Where else? Thought you said you were staying over. Well, I am, but I'm going to keep Mary company on the ride back. 
Anything wrong with that? And so a short time later, we find Larry at the wheel of their old car, with Mary sitting between him and Tom Bryson on their way to the station. Aren't you ever going to turn in this poor old tired car and get a new one, Larry? <laughs> Not till I pay off a few more debts. Why should we? We had another car. It was delivered right to the house a few months ago. But we sent it back. You should have heard the fuss Larry Jr. made when I tried to explain. I can't say I blame the kid. It's hard to understand that your father could make such a mess of things that he was practically on the edge of bankruptcy. It's a lucky thing Regina Rawlings came along right then and decided to produce Tom's play. Or we'd really be in a spot by now. You've managed wonderfully well, Larry. <laughs> Oh, don't make me laugh, honey. You're the one who's made the money stretch. It's about time you started spending something on yourself. Oh, I don't really need anything right now. Well, Mary, you ought to have a pretty good little nest egg of your own by now, I should think. What makes you say that, Tom? Well, those costume jewelry pieces you designed for, uh, you know, what's his name? Oh, Mr. Martin, the jeweler in New York? Yeah, yeah. Sure, you ought to be pretty well fixed if you invested the money carefully. I invested it in the best possible way, Tom. Well, you never told me what you did with it, Mary, or isn't it any of my business? Oh, of course it is, darling. I invested it in our family. What could be better? What do you mean? Oh, how did we get started on this? You mean you used it to pay bills? Oh, Tom, for heaven's sake, why don't you stop? No. You never told me that, Mary. <laughs> darling, what difference does it make? It makes a lot to me. Larry, we've always worked together, haven't we? Isn't that what we promised to do when we got married? Well, yes, but hang it all... You better pull over to the right, Larry. You'll be more likely to find a place to park. Yeah. I guess right in here will be all right. Oh, this is fine. Oh, it's a good thing you didn't decide to walk. You'd never have made it. That's the train now. It might be the train from New York. It's sometimes late. No, it's your train. Better get out, darling. All right, goodbye. And thanks for the lift. We'll be waiting for you tonight. Good luck, darling. Thanks. So long, Tom. Yeah, so long. And uh, pack a minute the performance of the show tonight, Larry. And remember, my royalties depend on you. Here's a happy parting thought. Darling, hurry. Oh, honestly, the casual way Larry steps on the train just as it's pulling out, you'd think he had all the time in the world. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and I'm just the opposite. I'm always waiting on the platform hours ahead. Yeah, there she goes. <laughs> uh, you want to let me drive back, Mary? Yes, if you want to, Tom. All right. Only remember that our poor old car isn't as lively as your brand new one. No, I know. Well, I'll just get out and walk around. Uh, you sit still, dear. Well, that's that. <laughs> oh, uh, maybe we'd better wait till some of these other cars pull out. They must be waiting for the train from New York. Yeah, whatever you say. Oh, there it comes now. It's really oh. late tonight. Should be ahead of the other train. Well, we might as well wait till it unloads and the people start driving away. That is, unless you're in a... Well, you're in a hurry to get back, Mary. No, I'm in no hurry. Maud's there, and <laughs> Larry Jr. will be delighted to have the extra time before going to bed. <laughs> he's very busy with a kite he's repairing. <laughs> <laughs> well, here she comes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Quite a crowd getting off at that. The train's always crowded. The late commuters who missed the 517. You know, I don't know that I could ever get used to living by a timetable. <laughs> Somehow the idea of having... Mary, take a look. You see that man? What man? He got off the other end of the train. He's heading toward that taxi. Well, what's so remarkable about that town? Oh, I just thought I recognized it. In fact, I'm almost sure I did. Well, what's so strange about that? Well, that man being here in Rosehaven. What's he doing here? I could almost bow. I've seen the guy before. And... My gosh, it is. It's Captain Captain Jennings. Well, so you know a Captain Jennings. What's unusual about well, that? Well, he's bad medicine, Mary. Every place he shows up, there's bound to be trouble. I ran into him out on the coast when I was writing pictures. Well, Rosehaven is a free town, Tom. Anybody who wants to can come here. Of course, I may be wrong. It may not be Captain Jennings. But that guy looks a great deal like him. And just out of curiosity, I'd like to see where he's going. He's getting into that taxi ahead of us. I think I'll follow that cab. All right. Only it's a silly idea. He's up ahead, Tom. Three cars ahead. But they'll soon scatter on the main street and we'll be able to catch up. Mary, I can't get the idea out of my head. I'm sure that guy must be Jennings. 
You see, he caused a lot of trouble for people I knew when I was out in Hollywood. As a matter of fact, he's almost what I'd call a dangerous character. Dangerous? What do you mean, Tom? Well, he likes to horn in on other people's affairs. Mainly for reasons of money. <laughs> Wonder where he can be going. That cab he's in is going down the road past my house. Yeah, we're almost there. The cab's going beyond, down to the end of the road. Well, of all things. What do you mean? It's going right past my house. Right down to Regina Rawlings' place. Yeah, you're right, Mary. Look, the cab's turning into Regina's driveway. Wonder if I can be wrong. Was that fellow really Captain Jennings? Of course, he isn't a real Captain Mary. He just used that title to impress people. But I have a hunch he's the same guy I used to know out on the West Coast. And why do you suppose he's going into Regina Rawlings' place? Wonder how Regina ever got to know him. Who is this man who has just driven into the driveway of Regina Rawlings' estate? Even if Tom Bryson is mistaken about his identity, does his presence in Rosehaven mean more complications for Mary and Larry Noble? We'll be sure to be listening Monday to Backstage Wife, the story of Mary Noble and her husband, Larry Noble, famous Broadway star. <laughs> Ladies, don't let hair that lacks luster, hair that's not delightfully fragrant, hurt your chance for romance. Wash your hair at least once a week with Mulsified Coconut Oil Shampoo. Many women everywhere use Mulsified Shampoo because, unlike so many soaps, it rinses out readily and hence leaves no after film to hurt the looks and fragrance of your hair. When you use Mulsified Coconut Oil Shampoo, your hair becomes a gleaming crown of glory, clean, tempting, fragrant, fresh. And while it beautifies, it also protects. For Mulsified Coconut Oil Shampoo contains none of the harmful free alkalis often found in ordinary soaps. It removes loose dandruff instantly, and its rich, creamy lather is so mild, so gentle, you can use this shampoo as often as you like without harm. In addition, Mulsified Coconut Oil Shampoo is a pleasure to use, for it foams fast, lathers freely, and cleanses oiliness without tiresome rubbing. So get Mulsified Coconut Oil Shampoo today. Get the big bottle at any toilet goods counter. It gives you more, saves you money, lasts for months. That mulsified coconut oil shampoo. Mary Noble, backstage wife, will be on the air again Monday at the same time. Ford Bond speaking for the makers of Double Dandarine and Mulsified Coconut Oil Shampoo. This is your final chance, friends, to hear me tell you how you can get a beautiful, useful Atlas Crystal Hostess dish free with every purchase of a 50 cent size tube of new Lion's Toothpaste. While the limited supply lasts, you can get your glass hostess dish. But don't wait any longer, for this is the kind of dish every woman wants. A dish that's ideal for serving vegetables, cereals, desserts of all kinds. And a dish that's richly handsome, too. Fashioned in an exclusive modern princess pattern, it's edged with a band of real gold. Will look stunning with your finest china. So hurry, get yours free by buying a 50-cent size tube of new lion's toothpaste at any 